Fan Geek. I'm Richie Castellano. Joining me today is my co-host Jarrett Preston. Oh my God, are we in the Oasis? I can't tell. No, it's so look at our avatars; they look exactly the same as our regular <laughs> tars. And our special <laughs> guest, our friend, the uh, dungeon master himself, Tony Hansen. In a yeah. world. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people have been asking me, "What do you think of Ready Player One?" And I figured if so many people are asking me, we better do a podcast on it. All right. Uh, okay, so what is Ready Player One? Uh, Ready Player One is a book that our friend Damien Scrow was telling me to read for about six years. He read, <laughs> he read it so long ago, <clears throat> and uh, and I didn't read it until actually, um, you know who you know who was the final straw that made me actually read the book was um, Phil Isherwood, the guy who owns Saber Forge. Okay, like when me and Eric went to go visit Saber Forge. Saber Core. <laughs> Saber Core. Saber Core. Viridian. Exactly. Um, <laughs> he he said, you, you know, it's like Ready Player One. I'm like, I haven't read that. He goes. You haven't read that? Go read that. And he like he he it wasn't even like an option. He was like, no no no, go read it. Like stop, just go read it. Go read it. Um. So, <clears throat> and how I, long did it take you? I read it. It was the fastest thing I ever read in my life, and it's not because it's a short book. Uh, I read it. I think I read it in a day and a half. I think that. Yeah. That thick. Um, <laughs> and it's my favorite book of all time. You read the book mm-hmm. twice. You, you did not read the book. Did yet. not read the book. I just saw the movie. So I figured we're a good cross section here of people to talk about the movie, and uh, because we we read it, he didn't, and we have different opinions on it. Apparently, <laughs> well, I cheated. I read it, and then I listened to the re- <coughs> reread it, listening to the audiobook narrated by Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Okay, so um, I guess let's. Uh, okay. Oh, first of all, spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie or read the, if you haven't seen the movie, yeah. Well, the, yeah. the book. The, we're not going to talk about the book much. But if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, I guess more the movie. Spoilers, okay? Um, and shut us off now. So here we go. So, <laughs> so now um, you've been warned. Okay. So um, the, uh, the here's the thing: when you read the book, you think to yourself, "There's no way." Oh yeah, that's Tony's name. <laughs> you figure this, there, there's no way. That, hey, there's my name. Yeah, that's right. Let's just spend the rest of the episode pointing out stuff. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you you think to yourself, there, there's no there's no possible way they're going to be able to make a movie out of this. It's it's jam. So the Cliff Notes version, which I don't even know if that exists anymore, but the Cliff Notes version is that now it's called the internet. And now it's called yeah. the internet. Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, the Cliff Notes version is basically, so it takes place in the not too distant future. Um, the world is a shit show uh, and uh, everybody goes into this immersive experience called the Oasis, which is basically the internet with goggles. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a VR internet. And um uh, basically, the creator of it um, passes away. Um, he was a huge uh, '80s pop culture junkie and and nerd and and social awkward uh, guy. It's like a Steve Wozniak meets Bill Gates meets like Howard Hughes kind of character. Meets sort of. Garth Algar. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, he passes away. He reveals to the world that he hid an Easter egg inside of the Oasis. Um, and uh, if you don't know what an Easter egg is, explain what an Easter egg is, Tony. <laughs> an Easter egg is something clever or fun put into a video game uh, that is made for you to find only by playing the game in like the just an adventurous or a passionate way. So literally, they might hide something in like a, a place that you is off the beaten path. You go there, you find it, you open it up, and then you get to experience something that's fun and witty or quirky. Exactly. Like, if you're just playing the game to win, you'll never find it. But right. if you're playing the game just to inhabit every single little area of it, you'll you'll eventually stumble on it, and you'll be like, oh, this is a cool thing that no one knew was there. Right. Right. So, uh, and the, uh, you have to collect three keys. They are copper, uh, jade, and crystal. Um, you also have to pass the three gates associated with those keys. And if you can pass all of those challenges um, and get all the keys, uh, you will uh, gain control over the entire oasis. And the guy's considerable fortune. And the guy's considerable fortune. <clears throat> um, in the book, there is a company called IOI. Um, and they are also trying to seize control of the Oasis so that they can basically put ads and... And monetize know, it more heavily. You know, and be like, oh, look, you want to go play a video game? Now you're elbow deep in Asian teens. That's, you know, that's the... Oh, my God. <laughs> that's the... Uh, I didn't get that from the book at all. Nope. Uh, well, it's just uh, it just ads, internet ads. <laughs> um, so uh, the book was the most fun thing ever because... Um, just, I mean, it, the point you were making is that it's so jammed full of pop culture 
everything. It's so saturated right. that it would be impossible to do all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the the, the thing is the... We were discussing this the the other the other day over over breakfast that um, it's not the, the setting is is almost like a logical step. It's like when if you think to yourself, what should video games be like, right? That's and, and you read this book. It's a very futurism sort of take on. It kind of feels like it. Right. Yeah, on how video games should be. Like it should be immersive. It should full be full immersion. Yeah, full immersion that you think you're there. Um, you should be able to go anywhere you want, uh, reenact any sort of uh, franchise you want. You should be able to, you know, fly X-wings. You should be able to, you know, uh, d- uh, you know, fight crime with Batman. You right. should be able to, uh, you know, play a part in your favorite movie. Right. You want to boogie board down Mount Doom? Like, go yeah. for it. There's a planet. There's a planet dedicated to it. Right. Right. Um, and the the. The interesting thing about this book is how it's genre, it's it's franchise hopping, uh, and this, which is something you like to do a lot of in in your um, your role playing game quests. Yeah. Is that like you know you might have um, someone, uh, Master Chief, is, like, he plays yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, and Master Chief shows up. Yeah, with Star exactly. Wars and comes and, out. and and that's a very big part of this game that there is like um, all these different pop culture uh, assets end up in the same game. Right. You know, uh, and the thing is. Just from a legal licensing point of view, you look at this movie and you think to yourself, there, "There's no way. Yeah. There's no way they're going to get all this stuff. Like the the licensing fees would be just, just you know, astronomical." Um, I always use the um, analogy of Roger Rabbit. Um, I feel like now they could do it, but like five years ago, that would have never like Disney and and Warner Brothers and you know all the animation kings never would have put their same characters in the movie right, right. together so um okay so the 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 book like jared described um just takes all these different pop culture uh references from the 70s and 80s mostly because um the character was like really into that particular time period right uh so uh basically whoever wrote this book uh figure out a way to say let me put every single thing that i ever liked into one story and and the whole thing with the easter egg hunt and everything was a very clever way to bring that together and to, to take the obvious like futurism of the oasis all the things that he loved and put it in a story that you actually gave a crap about it, it could right. have easily been i think it was you and damien yeah, saying yeah. that but it easily could have been a very bad story yeah. if it wasn't the tone of the easter egg hunt definitely exactly so and it, it's sort of you know and when you're reading it, the, the funny thing is when you're reading the book it's very spielbergian like, like you feel like you're watching a Spielberg movie just when you're reading the book. So when we all heard that Spielberg was directing it, our first, our first reaction was, "Holy crap, that's perfect!" And right. our second reaction was like, "How the heck are they going to be able to do this?" Yeah, it, you it can't. Seemed, it seemed like a no-brainer in the beginning, and then, then the more, well, we'll get to our opinions. But well, the more and more I kept reading, I was like, "Ah, they're gonna." I like this book too much. Yeah, like I saw the like after reading the book. I went and watched the trailer again, and I said, "This is gonna suck. <laughs> this is nothing like the book." And I and I'm and I was saying to to a friend of mine this weekend, I said, "I was like, I'm never one to be like eh, in Game of Thrones, this person's still alive, and then like in Harry Potter, there's a whole subplot." Where, this is what they sound. Every, my friend sounds well, like, like Lord of the Rings. Elves shouldn't have been there. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and I get why in the Harry Potter movies they didn't do the whole subplot of like Hermione freeing house elves. Like, right. sure, I get it for Hollywood's sake, but there's so much in this book, and it got changed so drastically that I half enjoyed it. Oh, and I and you're I, jumping I, in. And I and I, and I am I, and I feel like somebody like me like they this was like a big old softball for me. Like the book was great. The first time I read it I was like this is amazing. And I read it a second time which me reading things twice is just I I don't understand how my brain did that. But um so do you think it was a bad movie or do you think you just didn't like it because you read the book? Um it's hard to say because I read the book. I can't go into it not, you know, pretending that I didn't well, read the book. Okay, Tony, you didn't read the book. What do you think? I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I, I, I understand the perspective of reading the book. And I'm sure when I do read the book, I will have a different feeling. Because um, I heard, you know, obviously, the book seems to be, like, much more involved. But just talking about strictly from my point of view, I thought the movie was excellent. I had a great time. Um, I liked the whole tone of it. I, you know, Spielberg... The magic of Spielberg, like the old movies that we you know we think of in the past in the eighties and such, you know that was there, and I felt like that was coming up, and I would have moments of that watching and saying like, "Oh my, this feels like 
it feels like Goonies or it feels like, you know, something old like that. And um, I like the story. I like the whole thing. I even like the message at the, kind of the end. Uh, I liked how it wrapped up. I had no complaints about the entire thing. I thought it was great. Did you ever go to Universal Studios? Yeah. I felt like I was watching an, like a two-hour version of Back to the Future of the Ride. Well, this is, I'll, I'll, I can explain this. When, when Harry Potter, I, I played Dungeons and Dragons, it's something I've played since I was eight years old, so mm. I consider myself an expert on it. Go back and listen to those episodes, those old Van Geek episodes. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, when Harry Potter first came out, they were doing things saying, like they had the invisibility cloak. Mm-hmm. And to me, when it first came out, I was like, this is so cliche. And I watched people, this before I really got into, this, into the thing, which Harry Potter obviously is, is a great series of movies. But, um, it's 20 years old this year, isn't that nuts? That's crazy. <laughs> but um, looking back with the things they were coming out with, I was like, this is so like watered down Dungeons and Dragons. It's so this. Because that's what it is. You're so into something, and it, it go, a taste goes out, and then you feel like, oh, they're just playing with the little version of this. And it's kind of how this was, probably. I, I always called Harry Potter fantasy light. <laughs> it is like that with a it's little diet extra fantasy. of something else, some goofiness, you know? I love that soda, diet fantasy. <laughs> diet fantasy. Oh, okay, so... Um, let me let me tell you what I thought when I saw the when I saw the trailers. I was very scared because I said, right off the bat, I had three huge problems with 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 the movie uh, before I even saw it. And the problems were Wade's supposed to be fat, correct, um, and hairless. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> right. Um, um, Artemis is supposed to not be as nearly as pretty as she was, like. <laughs> Like the like she's supposed to be sort of Rubenesque. That's that's the word. So and that's, um that's the and word also they used to her. she's supposed to have like a big purple blotch on her face. And basically they picked this very pretty girl with the faintest birthmark. And she's like, "Don't look at me." I'm like, "That's a that's like for for a nerd that is so not a problem." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's <laughs> like it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> like like the thing you have on your face is so not a problem for for 95 percent of the male population. <laughs> and, and that's also why they did that probably. And that's yeah. why they and that's one thing they translated it from the book he was like i don't have a problem with you yeah. and it's like of course you don't she's pretty yeah, she's, she's beautiful this girl <laughs> and her hair's like sweeping across her like kind of smallish eye birthmark yeah. it was like um it looked like barf's thing in space balls like that's exactly what it looked like she's just, just the round yeah. brown she's like don't look at me yeah. i'm like i'm hideous because i have no problem with that i'm like of course he doesn't it's not a big deal <laughs> it's not like the book where she where it's like this it's like a debilitating thing that she doesn't want anybody to see but um <laughs> don't so, look at my face look at the hip so I, they put me in <laughs> yeah so 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 i figured like that was sort of a little too hollywood uh th- that particular uh part of it and also the fact that in if you've read the book uh you'll know that the big twist is that twist. Is twist. That, <laughs> the big twist is that um H is a guy. H is not a guy. It's H is a woman. Right. Uh, so, and the thing is, they they show you a, a big poster of H as a woman on the on the billboard. I'm like, yeah. that's and the whole reveal. That's a good point because you know when I saw the poster, I saw it after the movie, and yeah. I said, thank God I didn't see this because I would have known everything. Yeah. They totally like ruined the big features of the movie. Like you have no idea what Artemis looks like, yeah. and you're not supposed to. Right. Uh, the only person you know what they look like is Wade, and he doesn't look like an, anything like his avatar. Which in this, he was like not a really bad looking guy he was in decent shape the whole movie yeah you know uh, no, but what no, else was that no, but the thing is that I, you, you laugh but that's a feature of the book yeah, yeah because what it. happens is he from playing the game he gets so fat that he ends up locking the controls of the game to a treadmill so he has to run for like he has to run like two miles before the game will turn on and he like, oh, like wow. yeah, that's a big feature of it and another feature of it that was sort of cut out from the uh, the movie was school School plays a huge part of, of the book. It's the whole beginning of the book takes place in school, and they totally removed that. Right. That being said, I love the movie. Um, and I'll tell you why I love the movie. <laughs> all uh, of that. I'll tell you why. <laughs> after all that. No, because but those were my concerns going in. Concerns, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but a- after I saw the movie, I loved it because I said, you know what? This was a great movie, and it really doesn't it's, – it's not like the book – and that's okay because the book is still good. It's not like I. What I would hate is like, for example, the Da Vinci Code, right? Mm-hmm. Which I read the Da Vinci Code and I love the book. And then I saw the movie, which really wasn't as good as the book. Okay. Uh, but it's so close to the book that I can't really go back and read the book again and enjoy it because, like, now I'm just going to see Tom Hanks. Right. You know what I mean? But like, where as this is so different from the book that I can go back and read the book as it's like a different interpretation of the same story, uh, like of almost like mythology. 
You know what I mean? Like where it's where you see different, or you see different interpretations, like Shakespeare, for example. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I like this interpretation of the story, where, where it, it's it's a story that's so kind of universal that it can be reinterpreted, and that like after I saw the movie, I was like, I loved it, and I'm excited to go back and read the book, and that never happened to me okay. with a uh, story that was based on a book, because they're so different, and there's so many. It, it's almost like. Like if you look at this movie, sort of like instead of looking at the movie in a book as as oh the the book is amazing and the movie is it's just a terrible uh, version of or it's, it's a it's it pales in comparison. Right. Instead of that, look at it like a pick a path. You know what I mean? Like instead, no, it's of, like a like a choose your own adventure. Is that what choose you mean? your own adventure. Never, like, heard, never heard that term pick a path. Yeah, but it's like it, it's almost like a choose your own adventure because like. <laughs> In the book, the first chat, like again, okay, in the movie, obviously the first challenge is the race with the, the with the with King Kong and the DeLorean, yeah. right? That's the first challenge, and that was nowhere in the book at all. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, I wow. Thought, no, I thought the race was in there just in a very small way. No, nope. there's no race in the book. He doesn't even drive the DeLorean in the book. He yeah. has oh. it, yeah, but he doesn't drive it. So, so when I first saw the, um, which seems silly, but there's a lot in the book. Yeah. <laughs> when I first saw the race on the trailer, I'm like, what the hell is this? This is like a whole made up thing. Right. But um, then I'm like, oh, so in the book, the whole first key is different uh, because it's the race. But in the, I mean, in the movie, in the book, the first key is Dungeons and Dragons. You actually play through a Dungeons and Dragons module. That's cool. At, like as like you're the person, and you're going, you have to actually fight things. It is still adventure in, in the other part. What do you mean? I don't want to say the whole thing because you're on. Oh yeah, I think so. What? Well, um. Uh. Uh. So it's. Uh, yeah, well, I just started reading the book. No, no, no. Yet. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's adventure. The but the fir- the, the first, first challenge in the book is yeah. He's basically in inside of an like an eight bit vid- game that he used to play on Atari or Commodore. I forget which then, particular game. I definitely, I definitely agree with you. It just seems like like right now. Okay, from my perspective, I saw the movie. And I'm enjoying the fact that I can, I'm going to go to the book and see like a completely different tale. It's yeah. complete. It's a completely different story. That, yeah. That's my point. Like the mo- the movie ruined the book in absolutely no way. You know where the characters are getting. You know the big reveals. Right. But the 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 journey the journey is completely different. And it's and I thought like wow this even though they didn't do the book which I love they went in a completely different direction. Like I still enjoyed the ride. Um, the only thing I was really upset about. Uh, with this movie was sort of the choice of music. Like, it starts off great with Jump, right? Which is exactly what Halliday would listen to. Sure. Then it goes to all this other music, which he wouldn't have listened to. Right. It goes to, like, Twisted Sister and Joan Jett, and it's like, no, 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 he's a nerd. And, 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 And the biggest part of the movie was his love of the band Rush. In fact, like, there's a whole key that is related to Rush, and... There was not a one Rush song in the whole movie. No, and in the, it, it's bothersome, too, because the trailer would lead you to believe, like, okay, the Rush thing is going to be part of it, because it is a huge part of the book. Um, and the only thing that was Rush-related in the movie was that I think it was H. I think H was wearing a 2112. Yeah, t-shirt. and when they go back in time to, uh, not go back in time, but when they go to, like, the little vignette of his childhood uh, home, oh. he's got, like, Rush albums all over the floor. Sure, I mean, but that's a nice little, that's a nice little Easter egg to the was book. That, was that in the movie? <laughs> What? That was in the book or the movie? In both. I don't remember that part. No, he, oh, he, there's like there's a lot of like Rush Easter eggs, like but they don't play any Rush music. Uh-huh. But because Halliday's favorite band in the book was Rush, yeah. So H is wearing a Rush T-shirt, and there's like a, when they go to the the um, the bedroom at the end. Not, yeah, not the bedroom. It wasn't the bedroom at the end. It, it was, was the um, the archives. Oh, okay. they go to the archive building. They look in one of those like dioramas. Like he's got Rush albums everywhere and Rush posters. Oh, okay. So that the choice of music was kind of whack, uh, but. You know that th- those really the, played like I, I could, the credits. <laughs> I could I could name my problems with this movie on one hand, okay. which I think is pretty good, considering that we just came from uh, the last two big movies were Justice League and the and the Last Jedi, right? You know what I mean? Which I need all my hands, toes, and your hands, hands and toes, <laughs> or your fingers and toes. But let's like um, so uh, that's fine. Like okay, n- I wish I wish there was more Russian in, in there because also that would have like been a good way to bring more people into this, you know. I I just all right. Book aside, okay. I'm I'm pushing the book out of my head for a second. It seems like based on what you were going to win, you were winning three trillion dollars and control over the pretty much the world. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, and it seemed like the challenges were too easy. 
I don't know if that may. I, I don't. I, I don't think so because it was obviously because he could have you know because he could like the race could reverse. But like it, the, the thing is, it's not that the challenges were themselves were difficult. It's it's playing a game where like you don't know what the challenge is. You have no idea. And, and like we're looking at it as like following it along, but like obviously the how big is this whole thing? It's ridiculously huge. Right. It could be anything. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, when we when whenever we play a role playing game with Tony that he makes up. Whenever he puts a puzzle in, the game stops oh to a God. dead halt. They, they're terrible at puzzles. But the thing is, like, yeah, because you're looking at the characters reason out the puzzles, you think it's easy. But if you have to actually do it yourself with no clues except for a puzzle, it's very hard. Right. You know, like, I made easy puzzles on, on the D and D version go back, yeah. and they still have trouble with that. I was like, try to help them out. But you guys, then you, once you guys got the idea, you got it down. So yeah, he's talking about um, our trip to Artemis, which is the next episode, which we will be wearing the same clothes on. So no, we're, to- we're totally different. <laughs> <laughs> Cha-cha. Basically, I have a busy week with BOC. And I'm trying to put out as much content as possible. So <laughs> I have a mustache in this one. That's Ooh, right. This is my avatar. <laughs> I look different. No, you, your mustache was digitally removed by uh, by <laughs> DC. <laughs> one million dollars to remove it. Can you ever? Did you ever meet a hippopotamus, Superman? Um, Faith is like your car keys. <laughs> Actually, I still can't see that when I watch the movie. I can't. Oh, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I, I guess I'm I, I'm not as critical of CG as other people are. Why won't you live? Why won't you let me die? Spe- speaking of CG, this movie had, this movie had tons of it. This it, it was it based did. in CG. I there were there were definitely parts I enjoyed, but just as a whole, it just felt too. I don't, uh, it's weird because you're right. We just came off of Last Jedi and Justice League, two movies we should have loved, un- like un- unconditionally loved. It felt very produced, and this felt very produced. It felt very studioy, but it was definitely like a it was definitely a popcorn movie, which we haven't really had a this, good one in a while. Well, this one, I mean, you go to the video game stuff, it has to look that way. But like, I tell you the truth, every I don't time, mind every, that. every time, no, I don't mind it either. Every time, I was actually talking about uh, DC being the. Uh, Justice League being very reduced, I felt like. It, Justice League had, like, a lot of parts where it felt like... Uh, somebody used the word gummy um, in parts, where, like, the CG looks gummy. Like, do you remember, like, Blade oh. 2? Yeah, And, like, yeah, they yeah. were kind of, like... Know and, you know? But, but uh, this one, uh, Ready Player One, if this, I mean, again, it's it felt like Spielberg. It felt like the you get the feels in your heart like being a kid in the 80s again. Right. You know, he goes in to do that, Spielberg. And, 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 I, and I'm still... Well, after watching a lot of movies and doing a lot of storytelling and things like that... I'm still very curious to figure out what is it about the scenes? Is it about the the shots and the way he does it, the timing? You know, because it feels like a, you feel like a kid again. Right. I do remember reading one thing too, where uh, before the movie came out, and they were talking about you know how do they adapt this story to a movie, and they went into they went in and they were like, okay, here's our version of the script, and they said that the, uh, Ernest Klein, who's the author, said the first thing the studio said is, well, we can't do this big zero gravity nightclub. That's how expensive is that going to mm-hmm. be? And then they got Spielberg on board, and they he was like, um, "Yeah, we we're doing the zero gravity nightclub <laughs> yeah. because it's a like a key point in the book, yeah, um, and in the story. And it's very different in the book and the story too. That that, that scene, right? But it's the, the principle is the same, you know, Artemis and um, uh, Parzival, uh, you know, basically like that's when they split. She's like, I can't be right. with you because I have to focus on right. this and everything. Uh, I want to take a quick break here just to take care of some business. If you'd like to go into your own oasis yes, uh, and if, tip if, us. If you want to support the show, uh, please go to richiecastlown.com slash tip jar. Uh, it's a PayPal form from our partner site Streamlabs, and it's just a regular PayPal payment. Totally safe, and we appreciate your contributions. If you use Amazon, use our Amazon link at riotcast.com slash bandgeek. Click the Amazon banner at the top of the page, then do your shopping like normal. A small percentage of your purchase goes to supporting our show, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Plus, we have awesome Band Geek merch now. Check that out. We have hats. We got shirts with the incredible art from Mac Myers, the awesome uh, uh, cartoon Band Geek version. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we still have some of those available. So check that out. Okay. Um, this, 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 I, can't, I still can't ever figure that out. This hat. Yes. <laughs> uh, the thing I wanted to point out was that I was sort of taken aback by is what I thought the Oasis was going to be like in my head when I was reading the book is that it looked photorealistic. Uh, but then, but and I thought they sort of played with that a little bit too much. Like most of the people looked like animated, uh-huh. like video game characters. But then there was a part where he put like a mask on of himself, and and they could make it photorealistic. So th- I felt like if you could make things photorealistic in the Oasis, why wouldn't you make both? And and because like they kept going back and forth. I, that. See, I see what you mean. Well, it's again, it's again, video game. A lot of video game creators make a stylized game. 
graphic wise. But it just seemed like every single character was um, stylized, like animated, and then when they wanted to fool somebody, they were able to make it photorealistic. Right. So I just didn't understand like why we didn't see it more of a mix. You're talking about like when they would look at the memories and they would it would actually be real. No, no, no. I'm talking about when they went to go fool Sorrento into thinking he wasn't in the game, and right. he put the mask on of his own face. Oh, yeah. Oh. And the guy and the guy like he was able to trick the guy into thinking he was in in reality. So if the graphical ability that that's the one thing so that, that didn't happen in the book, right? Uh the which part? No, no, the tricking him yeah. part? No. So that's that was That one, was a little reachy. It was a little That was, it was a reach a because we have to is VR goggles. Right, because like what they're showing <laughs> they you cool. in this in the movie what they're what they've established is that this looks like a video game, which is not what I got from reading the book. But I was right when I saw it. I was like, "Okay, this looks like a video game, but it's VR. You're in it, and who gives a shit that it, it doesn't look uh, like photorealistic?" But then when they said, "Oh, we use this tech to fool him," yeah, but the graphics of the game, from what you've shown so far, don't support that feature. Well, no, wait, you know, but they do. The, again, the memories of um, of the the creator. Yeah, but those were digital recreations and not technically the. They weren't Oasis. renders. They weren't renders. They weren't real time was... renders. <sighs> Um, and, and, <laughs> okay. but you tell, you also touched on it before, like, it, again, we're going to go back and forth, book, movie, book, movie, but in the book, like, everything takes place in the Oasis. Shopping, school, you know, uh, life. you know, like, it's life, it, it's just pretty much there because the world is just a crap factory. And they didn't and, really show that. And they didn't really show that, so a majority of the movie is just like, no, people go there to play video games and escape. So, you know, like you said, like, you want to fight crime with Batman? Like, that's something they say in the movie that you can do. You want to, you know... Just, so you uh, can climb a mountain. Yeah. You, yeah. You climb Mount Everest with Batman. Climb Mount my, my Everest with Batman. But that's part of what... See, what's irking you is what's making me appreciate that I could still go back and read the book. Sure. Um, but one... See, okay, I felt like as a video game for this movie, like, that everybody is playing this game... That's fine, right? That worked for the movie. Because, honestly, there really wasn't enough time. And, and, and the movie was pretty long. There wasn't enough time to explore all the, um, uh, the ramifications of having a system like the... Uh, or the possibilities of having a system like the Oasis. Right. But the book explores it, like, fully. Like, the book basically explains that um, you can... You live in the Oasis. You do your shopping there. You do all your socializing there. You go to school there. You work out there. Mm-hmm. The you, only thing they do to uh, showcase that is the opening sequence of the movie. Where yeah. Right. Where you see all the people with different things. Like, yeah, they're ordering pizza. Some some, some, lady, some ladies on, on, like, the... The stripper pole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <coughs> but, like, there's also, like, a whole... There, there's huge sections of the book that aren't even in the movie which is why i'm sort of excited for tony because for example if it like for example lord of the rings mm-hmm. right i have no desire to read lord of the rings everybody like, like that's I, how i feel like i feel like the movie <laughs> is so good that i have no de- no desire to read it and those it's, are also so long i yeah. want to read it but like i don't i don't have any desire to read it. i like to know just to experience it but i don't want to sit down but the thing it. is like everybody who who has read lord of the rings tells me oh yeah there's a lot of songs and there's this that and like, but you know, the songs are kind of annoying and all this <laughs> stuff. And, and it's like, okay, so why would I want to go read that book now? But with this, I'm actually excited for you to read the book oh, because yeah. it's it, it's so much more. It's like also, it, I correct me if I'm wrong because you read it more more recently than me. Mm-hmm. In the book, there's not only keys but gates. Right. So there's six challenges. So there's six challenges. So you have to. Beat a challenge to get the key, yeah. and then the key has a clue on it, to and then find the gate. to find the gate, and then you have to go through the gate. So it's technically each key technically has three steps to it. Wow! You have to find where the key is, decipher like, the clue. The book isn't even that long; it's like three hundred pages, right? It's it's not the longest book, but it's it's the, it, there's a lot of uh, it's very. Sl- it also takes place over several years, too. So the uh, in the book. Um, it's just yeah. It's more. It's more immersed in like Halliday's brain, uh, in a sense of just like all these things that he loved. Like one of the uh, one of the things in the books um, is a thing called uh, Flick Sinks, which is a, a game that you can play um, in the Oasis. And basically, it's like you get put in the the driver's seat of you know uh, your favorite movie. But they did that in the movie a little bit. Did they? Yeah, yeah the, the Shining. Shining. 
Yeah, but that wasn't. But that the in, in the book, it's um, in the book you have to you have say to the right. You line, have to do the all right the dialogue action. word or, or for word. Or doesn't move forward. Yeah, or it doesn't move forward, or you lose. Or you lose much. this. Yeah, that's pretty the, cool. All, as as and even completely separately, that shining thing was a weird detour. I, I, loved I liked that. it. It was. It really I, screwed I, with my brain. I, thought, I was like ple- pleasantly surprised by it. I was like, I appreciated the uniqueness of it. I, I was watching it when I, when I was reading the book. I'm like, how? The, like that was one of the things I was looking at. I was like, like, how are they doing all this? How How are they going to do that in the movie? And I thought, there's no way they're going to add this part. This This, this is going to get cut out. And when right. they actually put, like, they attempted to put that in the movie and to watch all like the cartoony avatars walking through the actual shining footage yeah. I was like that was really cool that was really well done and it was but it like and it just went like a step too far for me because the shining is a messed up movie regardless so which I think that was the creep factor for me but then you're like okay they're in the overlook hotel all right cool they're gonna get they're getting chased by a giant axe no oh god they're gonna they're doing the thing with the lady in the bathtub stop please stop please stop I, it. I just like <laughs> that H is this hulking like you know ogre yeah. sort of thing and and she's like freaking out like in the shining like this, this like basically the character you'd want to be with you in the in the shining like yeah. think about it, like if you're playing if you're playing through this like oh, I'm going to pick my biggest baddest guy right. to go in there and just and kick ass and like the, and, and she was that character <laughs> and it didn't work like the movie was so scary I, it didn't work I keyed into the fact of what she who and what she was when she was saying like you don't know she could be Chuck and she could be a guy yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. a, they say that in the book a lot too I did like the after the shining challenge cuz that's a it's it's very similar to the book is that the sixers uh um in the book the people who work for IOI they have just teams of people so it's not just one person wins the challenge and that's it. You, nobody else can win it. Like the scoreboard in it can go on for hundreds and hundreds of people. Mm. So um, the the uh, Parzival, um, H, Artemis, um, Shoto, and Daito. I don't know how they call him Sho, but uh, they're the what they call the high five. So they're always around the top, and then Sorrento, and then like a bunch of Sixers. So I liked after the Shining Challenge that they couldn't get through it, and you saw them with all the goggles on going like, ah, oh, God. Oh, oh yeah, God. yeah, exactly. Ah. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. I think we're going to have a special uh, 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 mid midpoint crash right now. I didn't realize that you were midpoint. Yeah. Oh, we're midpointing. My bad. Well, i got to wake up early tomorrow, so I figured... I'm sorry, are you winding down? We're not winding down. We're at, we're at the, we're at midpoint. I just wanted to make the joke. We told Damien on the vacation we were winding down. <laughs> In memory of you. Well, well, you know you should you should try to sit right here. Oh, you got it. Honey. You know what you're doing. Oh, honey. Hey, everybody. Hey, we're driving, we're driving here. Car. Yay. <laughs> I'm driving Who a bus. Car? Car. Hey, How y'all. can that be? Talking to the microphone. Uh, try it. Hey, y'all. She looks so much. I don't think I can hear you. Us. Talk it again. Hey, y'all. I'm probably gonna make you louder. Hold on. I'm gonna make you louder. Is there a thingy? There is a thingy. Well, everybody's got a thingy. Have a switch. No, go. Talk. Hey. Again. What's up? Again. Ready. Player one. There we go. It's better. Okay, so um. Ever wonder what oh, happens for the forty-five Mom minutes? Is on that side on the screen, but he's on that <laughs> side in the life. That's me out. If you ever wonder what happens for forty-five minutes before we start recording, that's that. it. That. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, talk, talk. Now you talk. Okay, talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, I like I liked seeing that. But that also was a weird thing for me too where if you're immersed in the Oasis, they were talking to each other outside of the Oasis mm-hmm. and like reacting to each other outside the Oasis, which well, was weird for an immersion simulator. Okay, Amory, since you're just joining us, what did you think of the movie? I liked it. I thought it was nothing like the book, but I liked it. <laughs> Great. Well, that's it for Ready Player One. <laughs> Ready Player One. Nothing like the book. Highly enjoyable. That's what I thought. I don't know. Muff is making a face like he was not pleased with it. I like I said, there were parts of it I enjoyed, but I I don't know. Like it just they took out all your favorite things, pretty much. They took out all the little nostalgia thingies, that, and they kind of had this ragtag combination of things that made no sense. I'll tell you, man, though, like, yeah, seeing seeing the DeLorean, like, Fast and Furious Tokyo drift all over the place, like, that was dope as hell. Um, uh, the Iron Giant, sure. Um, not... <laughs> well, it's a, it's a play to the mechs that they have at the end of the book. Right. Also, you gotta understand, there's, there's something to look at here, is that Warner Brothers made this movie, so they had basically all Warner Brothers' intellectual property was fair game. Sure. So they replaced a lot of... Um, you know, the stuff that was in the book. But the, the thing I really liked was the disguise where he looked like Christopher Reeve all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, that was, was cool. actually pretty that funny. Was, that was really, really great. 
Um, they had a lot of cool things that they added, like in in the spirit of the book, but it wasn't in the book at all. Like that, that was super cool. I feel like um, now Amory read the book. Just so you guys know, I read the book in a day. Richie bought it for me. And he's like, "Why haven't you read this yet?" And then he was gone one weekend. <laughs> He, like, harassed me for months and months and months. I, like, you know, flew back and forth. He's like, why didn't you read it on the plane? It's like, it's like David harassed him. <laughs> no, but it, the book is like the game in Star Trek The Next Generation. Like, you have to play this. Oh, well, it's, it's, you, it's, know. it's yeah. like, so, you know, like, word crack. But, um... That's my least favorite episode, actually. Really? really? It's great. I'm, just, I'm so sick of it. Oh, it's, it's awful. But it's great, but it's awful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's hot, though. Yeah, Ashley, she really Ashley is. Judd. Ashley Judd. Young Ashley Judd. Young Ashley Judd. Anywho... <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, we were talking about something. We were talking about something. <laughs> Ashley Judd. <I> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> talking about young Ashley Judd. A bad man joke on that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Moving forward, moving forward, moving <laughs> forward. Okay, so um, I hate that they took out all the D&D stuff because the whole book is D&D stuff. The whole company is based on D&D stuff. Though, I, when I was like, oh, when they make this movie, I'm like, that's the first thing they're cutting. They're cutting that all out. But like, I hate how they made the challenges so much less than they were. Thank and you. And I also didn't like... I understand why they did it. I understand it. I still had a great time at the movie. Yeah, for time. If they did it for time, yeah, but I thought it was really lame that they made them all friends in the beginning. I really liked the coming together of everybody during the book, yeah. and I hated that they were like, these are my friends, Daito and Sho, and this is Artemis, and this is H. I'm like, uh, this was a cop <laughs> out. It's, all, it's also like, though, they did that and there's a lot of things about it that are like kiddish, right? Because it could come off very easily like, like, like a kid's movie. And that's also why I think it was important for them to do certain things at the time. They threw the shiny in there to make it like, this is obviously not a kid's movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So creepy. So, so it's probably some some things they had to do quick, some things they had to do like, you know, for kids, nostalgia. They had up this nostalgia supposedly from the 80s to the 90s. Mm. I think they just tried to, they had to make it more universal because what are they going to do? And they had to make it makeable. It was even, <laughs> you yeah. know. But there was more, It was it was completely up to date. It wasn't, it wasn't the '80s or the '90s, or to, it, was, it wasn't the radio hits of the '80s, '90s, and today. Um, they it, they um, tried to like Diva was in it, and and um, um, crap, and crap was in it. Yeah, I uh, got. I I don't know video game characters. The one with the freaking goggles and the orange hair, the chick. Dragon Ball. Um, oh no no um, Overwatch. Overwatch. Yeah, Diva. Oh, yeah. Isn't that her name? And Halo was in it. Yeah, there was Star Wars. Oh, I know. I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, Tony just all Yeah, but no, but here's the by. thing. You're confusing. Yeah. He had a good moment. You're confusing something. He had a good moment. Mm. Got it right here. The, the Oasis is able to have everything in it. You're confusing holiday stuff with the Oasis. The Oasis has everything. Right, but the... And, and that, that's fair. Like, if you ask me, that is totally fine. But the, the, the Easter egg hunt, that's 80s stuff. But not the actual setting. No, because in... It, because the it takes place in 2045. Right. The stuff that would like stuff like Overwatch and Halo stuff like that would never have ha- like never existed. Why not? That's a vintage Why game. They? The book was only written like four years ago. No, no, no. But I don't mean it like that. I mean in the in the in the world that they've created, they had different history, like the oil crisis and the land wars and all that kind of stuff. Like they made their own history, and it that stopped in like '96. Yeah, but wh- why? Why maybe maybe Overwatch was a game someone always had the idea for. It's possible. You know what I mean? It's also, like that's 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 such a small thing. I, yeah, I don't, also, I don't really um, take issue with I'm that. I'm dismissing your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you can also consider this. What about all the stuff that they keep rehashing and rehashing and rehashing? Halo started off in I think late 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 nineties, sure. and it, it could have been brought back and rehashed again. And now it's the most popular game in 2042, 2045. It right. could have been, but the 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 point is as it should be the Oasis <laughs> as it should be. But the Oasis is like kind of the point that us as gamers want to get to like we basically want to be able to put a headset on in a haptic bodysuit right and oh, basically, i want to live in the oasis yeah, don't get basically me wrong put the 3d gog the, the the vr 3d goggles on with the immersion headphones uh and basically i go into an adventure and, I, and all of a sudden i'm i'm s- sitting on a pirate ship actually there with tony hansen and he looks like captain falcon head or whatever uh, you don't want to be with anybody else <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and just and and, and we're and we're uh and we're doing and we're actually like doing the stuff we're making the moves and you're in there and then like all of a sudden uh so, you know muff shows up he's batman and and he does batman things in the thing and then all of a sudden the an x-wing uh a millennium falcon shows up we jump into that right we go into space and, and it's, it's a whole like all those games like how they've been incorporating like uh what's that game kingdom hearts and, and what yeah. they did with mortal yeah. Kombat. Yeah. And they had like all and the, maybe injustice stuff. yeah but it's yeah, exactly. it's the it's the dream like the, what this guy is the futurist dream for gamers like this is what and and if 
you know, if if he thinks that we're going to be at this point by 2040, yeah, that could be pretty awesome. Right. I think what are we, we'll, we'll be 60. No. Yeah. All right. I think it's my dad. My dad's 70. He still plays video games. I'm I'm ready. Sign Are me up. 70. Yeah. Wow. All right. Get your underwear out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll play in my underwear. <laughs> that that's but, why my dad plays in his underwear. He wants the uh, haptic suit to you know do what it's got to do. That's the cap to the line. Oh, wow. <laughs> but the the but check it out. The the thing that I thought was really cool. Imagine you were Halliday. Like th- that's I feel yeah. like I feel like. Ernest Klein is Halliday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and that so basically like Garth. No, but not Garth. But just imagine like <laughs> they made him like. But ima- just, yeah, right, ima- Garth. I, I I'll I'll, t- I'll d- bring it up in a second okay. because that's, I want to talk about that. But imagine, <laughs> imagine that you everybody like a whole generation of people had to study ever had to, had to like had to study something, every single thing that you were into because of your treasure hunt. Mm-hmm. And, and then what happened is all these kids got exposed to everything. Like kids that didn't know anything about the stuff you liked, that didn't know about Dungeons and Dragons, that didn't know about Halo, you know what I mean? That didn't know yeah. about Indiana Jones. Like basically they had to watch it and watch it so much to understand every little detail of it like you did to to you know get the the, the Easter egg, but in the process started liking it. And that's what I thought was the, the thing that transferred to the from the book to the movie very well. Okay. Was that it's just like no no these kids like this is old stuff that they weren't really interested in but um you know that translated? Yeah, I, I thought that like all these kids became fans of this stuff just through this guy. You know what I mean? Like Well, I feel like it's way way more in the book. Like I it is. I don't think it translated that I that actually, strongly. I actually don't think it did either cuz it seemed like it was just the five of them that like got it. And they no, didn't really about, get into well, Gunters. Well, and no, what about the Gunters was? doing it? They were also saying they were also suggesting that other people who are doing this well, the are getting into the, it. Oh, okay. They, but I feel like they were also like they were thinking, but they were also like looking through archives and digital. But they show stuff. you like the the few like ones that are there that are just like no, I I became I ended up loving this. Stuff. Oh, and then at sure. the end, at the end, even when it like when it when it wasn't one of them who won, they were like, yes, you got the thing. <laughs> yes. <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> flips. <laughs> But like and the other, another question is like, think about like what like a god tri- uh, like a, a power god trip that is like on the writer's part of the, it's like, here are all the things I like I like um, Atari video games I like Rush I like uh, John Hughes movies mm-hmm. I like all these things and I can write a book about. Uh, like a whole generation of people who are obsessed with all the things that I like. Yeah. Like that's 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 like a dream come. That's gonna be a fun book was, to write. It was encapsulated in just the perfect way to do so. Right. And I loved it. And honestly, it's cool because there is like such an excessive amount of detail in the in the books about like little things that you never notice from this film. So you can tell that this guy is like a stupid mega fan yeah. of this stuff that he like studied them in and out. Cause he's writing about these people studying like the way his lip moves when yeah. he says that one yeah. line yeah. and like stupid little things like that, which I, I thought was cool. I, I thought it was so crazy that they had like, like they have this guy's entire life like off for display. What I thought was really, really cool though in the movie that I don't think was really in the book was when they got to play out the scene from Halliday's life and then freeze it and zoom in and like it, they, zoom in when they talked enhance. about the archives it wasn't like that in the book and and you know the butler didn't exist in the book and right you mean more like they pl- they went into it and played Halliday yeah you, like they went in they could they saw like uh, the snapshot of his life but it's like yeah. it was they like a diorama like, like they could it. go in Manipul- it like, right. or, you know isolate just what he says I thought that that was super cool I yeah. thought that was a really nifty thing that they had this like hallway full of like vignettes of this dude's life. Yeah, that it was like was the carousel cool. of progress. I, <laughs> There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Sorry, <laughs> I, I wanted to, t- to talk about what you just talked about. <laughs> that they made. <laughs> you went on the carousel of progress. Shine very brightly every, every day. day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you complete sidebar, if you want to go down a YouTube hole, wa- uh, t- go type in um, Disney rides breakdown. <laughs> oh god, it's so Just amazing! A dream away. <laughs> There's people that get stuck on the Carousel of Progress, and it's like the part where he's like sitting in the rocking chair, and they're like, "Help us!" He he painted that wall eight times. Please help us! Becomes the Carousel of Stagnants. <laughs> so amazing! It's amazing. It's a great YouTube hole. But yeah, they I, um, and I'm not comparing it to the book, but they I feel like Halliday was weird, and he was like very cartoony autistic. I like that better. I thought how they worked I, I better. I loved his character. Yeah, but he was sort of like that in the he book. He was so likable. I thought it worked better in. The, I thought that was the one thing that worked better in the yes. movie. 
because and then he was super smooth as uh, Anorak or whatever his name is. <laughs> and because in the movie he in the book he he Steve Jobs pretty much. Yeah. In the book, but when you watch the movie, you said no, he's Steve Wozniak. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what and, and sure. you didn't really get that. For, but not Steve Wozniak, but he he it, he's basically like a real geek. He's like one of us, you yeah. know, and. And you didn't get that as much in the book. You just got that he's some eccentric Howard Hughes type, uh, you know, billionaire uh, who was just screwing with everybody and 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 mischief like being mischievous. You know what I mean? Uh, but it's like in in the movie you saw that he was like, no, no, this is a tragic figure. Yeah. And and I thought that they played that up for the sake of drama. But I thought that was the one thing that see because usually like you you read the book, you have the picture in your head. And then you see it, and it either doesn't doesn't add up, or it's not as good, or whatever. I thought this was the one part where whoever screen wrote it or whoever cast it actually exceeded the book. Right. Just this one area. Everything else, I'd probably prefer the book. But again, the way I'm reviewing this movie, and I'm sticking to this, is that movie's great. Watch it, enjoy it, and if you've never read the book, you could still go back and read the book and have a totally different fun experience. Yeah, yeah. And that, and then Kinda you can like watch choose your own adventure. And then you can watch the movie again, and you're like, okay, that's that's great. I see where they where they veered. Um, for I'm reading the book again, and I'm and I'm already like I'm three pages in, and I'm already noticing things that are different. Right. So I'm like, even though I've read the book already, I can go back and read it again. I think for a guy like you who read it again, I, I think that was your mistake reading it again before it came out. Right. Because it's like. <laughs> It's like you were just going in there just to compare it. I wasn't honestly because when I saw the first tra- I when I saw the first trailer I was like, okay, like they're going to add stuff like they're going to add a race because it's visually interesting. Yeah. It's it's not super visually interesting to watch him reenact Matthew Broderick reenact war games. Right. Like I get that. Sure. Um but it was just like, yeah. That it, would have been so cool that, to see. Oh, my God. That, how, that yeah. would have been super cool to see. It's, even if it wasn't War Games. Even if they picked another one. If they Ferris picked Bueller. Bre- yeah, Ferris Bueller or, or like any, Breakfast Club or something. Something well, more. They did mention it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they mentioned it, and and, and there is a there is a whole um, movie section in the, the the book that takes place of the Shining stuff, and um, uh, but it's like, I what I am looking forward to watching again is because it was so saturated and because they put so much stuff in there. Like, I want to go back. Like, there was t- so there was too much on the screen. And I know that there's a bunch of characters I missed in the background. I know that there's a bunch of oh, yeah. stuff, like, all over the place. Like, I he had... Um, I want to th- see it again. One thing I noticed in the movie, every time you saw Doritos, they were the old bag of Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, but yeah, just, like, during that final, like, battle just on, uh, on the planet, which is very similar to how the book... It was uh, plays out. That's literally how I envisioned it too, which is so bizarre. Me there were too. two times in the in the movie where I was like, nailed it. Which it was part? that the big the, battle. The big the battle end. at the end looked oh. exactly like it. The stacks looked exactly how I envisioned the stacks. Yeah. And uh H's basement that they didn't call H's basement. They didn't call it the basement. It was like his garage, whatever, but it really looked a lot like how I envisioned it. I didn't envision H's basement like that. I I envision I envisioned H's basement more like a nightclub with like like boot like when they're sitting playing video games and like bullshitting with each other. I, I envisioned it like that '70s show. Oh yeah, yeah all right. That's, but, but that's sort of what it looked like. But it was different because it had that one open wall to the garage, so you can see all like the futuristic stuff in the background. But like you know, like the uh, the wood paneling on the walls and right. like the rust colored carpet and like the crappy colored couches and stuff. I did like also speaking of that final battle was I liked where he's like. You know, hey, everybody on the way in the oasis, like we have to fight for our freedom and our private and our whatever. And he was just they're like all waiting there, and then you just hear, like, and then you just see the mountain coming over like, of just yeah. everyone, and, like every and, character ever, every avatar ever made, just running in like towards them. And, and, like, and, and even a game announcement made like that, every single person is going to be running. Oh them. my god, oh, it was yeah. so amazing! And I also love yes, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I also love that the, the the shots of the people in the street, like everybody's like just like dropping their oh, their grab and just like, like this, you know. That's something that they <laughs> never ever addressed in the book, and I actually always thought about it. I'm like, what if these people like? What is the real world like? Because they don't really talk about it in the book. They don't talk it must about be terrible. Like it seems very <laughs> it must be awful. Because I actually the way from from the book, the way I envisioned envision the real world was like total like nuclear kind of wasteland, like awful, like not. 
looking like a city that mm-hmm. people could walk around. Well, you they know? T- they talk about it in the book that there's like you know buses have like bulletproof like walls because there's like roaming like like gangs that like rob and murder people and stuff. And uh, it seems like this is probably more poor, and that's the idea of it. Like it's a lot. Everyone else, the middle class, has gone to all poor, and then you have the. One percent, right. which are probably three percent. And I feel like it's somewhere between Detroit and Fallout. That's how I'm envisioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what this Detroit on like. its way to Fallout. <laughs> yeah. It's, Robo it's Robocop Detroit, like like really crappy Robocop Detroit and Fallout. The, well, the the sad thing about the book is that the Oasis is a way to pacify the like impoverished. It's like people yeah. they, they they can't afford to eat, but they have a headset and they have a you know right. So it's like I don't it, like that they took away the school stuff too either. Yeah, we, we talked about that. that. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, again, going back, I keep going back to that final battle too. That that that, <laughs> uh, that battle again, you know, very similar to what happens in the book. It's a lot longer in the book, and there's different stuff happening. But that's how I felt. Like that's how excited we were for Justice League. We wanted to see. Cyborg flying through the air and Batman swinging past him and then Wonder Woman punching somebody up a, a flight of stairs and then mm-hmm. Superman punching him back down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And that actually encapsulated the final battle did it because you saw, you know, Master Chief shoot somebody while Freddy Krueger sliced a guy next to him and then somebody slid under this on a Tron light cycle and, you know, like all this kind of stuff. And someone and, threw Chucky. And yeah, the, yeah, it was just like like that That part of it is, yeah. is the... Uh, <laughs> That part of it is, like I said, what like I'm looking forward to rewatching because I know that there's definitely stuff I missed. So the recap of this is somebody give Steven Spielberg a superhero movie, please. <laughs> right. Well, because yeah, he'll, because he'll crush it. He was it. supposed to do something, wasn't he? I think he was very anti-superhero movie and he was vocal about that in the press saying this is a fad that needs to die. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's cap this up. Um, one out of ten. Um, movie on its own. Uh, just the movie. Okay. So movie on its own, I'd say... Five out of ten because it felt too, too popcorny for me, um, and it took me out of it. But again, I'm comparing it a lot to the book, so five out of ten. I'll probably rewatch it again for sure, though. Tony Hansen. I would give it a nine out of ten. I, f- I feel like I really enjoyed it. There's not there's not much I really complain about. Um, so, yeah, I think nine out of ten. My, my dad and and Eric Bloom had had like a, Eric read the book and he he gave it um, an eight. And he thinks that it, uh, I think it was eight. If I'm wrong, Eric, I apologize. But um, uh, he thinks the problem with it is that the hardcore gamer stuff, even though you don't think it was that hardcore, it was a movie like that spoke to gamers. Like, it, yeah. like all the lingo, all the... Right. it was he felt connected to it, definitely. You know, and, and he's he was like, um, I hope this is can find mass appeal because of that. But my dad thought it was like the most amazing thing ever because it's like, this is a movie for me because my dad's like the hardest of hardcore gamers. And he's just like, this is for me. Like, like respawning, uh, doing like, you know, uh, leveling up and oh, yeah, items and inventory <laughs> and doing like, my dad was like, this is, he goes, this is incredible. This is a movie for me. But that, you know, so that's something to think about. Uh, Amory, uh, one eight. out of ten. Eight? Solid eight. Uh, <laughs> Solid eight. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go eight as well. Uh, I thought that there were, um, it would be 10 if Wade was fat. <laughs> no, because I, fu- I felt no, like. No, Wade is supposed to look like me. It's, he's right. I felt, and, and he gets trim in the, in the, yeah, well, they the movie. Well, cut, they cut that whole part out of the movie. They cut that whole section where he was in the apartment and he had the suit and then he yeah. lost all the weight and got scrawny and pale yeah. and weird. Um, they cut <laughs> that hairless. whole aspect out of the book. So, I mean. They what, didn't need it though. Like, I get, I get why. They, too like, much time yeah, wasted on him getting skinny. But when also at the same time, I, no, but like, he, Richie, I understand he just made start him, to be a little. Just start him off fat and yeah, but keep they, him he fat. Wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't super it. skinny, Rich, is what I'm trying to tell you. fat? They explain why he's fat. You have to put the whole thing in the scenes. Him getting ready. It's it's a whole other store side story. No, just make he... just. The, but why explain it? Just this is a fat kid, and that's it. He looks oh, awesome. Well, yeah, make, Richie, make him fat no, the whole he movie. He was he was a little he was a little strange looking, and he wasn't super super skinny. So like it's like. Th- it's Hollywood. They, it's like they that's, didn't that's get Chris true. Pratt he wasn't to play like him. They didn't get like I get Jurassic it. Park Chris Pratt. But to, to as play a him. fat I'm person, sorry, what is Jurassic Park Chris as Pratt? As a like? fat person, <laughs> I wanted to see myself represented on the screen in a leading role. You're not a fat person. As a fat person, <laughs> you should want to have some. No, I'm right gonna say, no. Uh, but no, seriously, I read that, and I, when 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 it was when he was depicted as a fat guy, I'm like. Cool. Like this is that's like that's an anti-hero right there. But you know I, didn't I mean, think and he I thought was that fat in the book. 
I he's definitely fat in the book. I didn't think he was like severely fat. I think he was chubby like a normal person. Right. So make him chubby like a normal person and don't even address it. Like don't even like person? just like have it but the the that was like the things that got made it like too hollywoody. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that prevent this from being a slam dunk for me. Because like I like that the book had those like little things like this is a guy that is not a hero. You H, know what I mean? H is also supposed to be a bigger woman too. Yeah, yeah but well, she kind of was. Kind of was a little bit. Do you know what bothered me the most though? Go. If we're talking about body changes, yeah. friggin' Og. He's supposed to be this big, like bearded, curly, jovial dude, and it's friggin' what's his face? Uh, Simon uh, Pegg. Uh, Uncar Plutt. Uh, Uncle Plot. <laughs> He's supposed to look more like Uncle Plot than Simon <laughs> For gaining the crystal key, you get 50 portions. That's good. Wow. It's really good. It's too bad you mastered that character in that movie. <laughs> what about... Never to be heard like <laughs> What about the droid? Um, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some people watch that movie more than once, Richie. Wait, and now, now yell... yell <laughs> Now I've yell- said it about a dozen times. Come on. Now yell what Ray yells at Tito him, when she finds BB-8. Um, Total. Fun up park one. <laughs> Love that. Um, wait. Speaking of Simon Pegg, though, like we talked about, <laughs> um, we talked about like I'm glad you didn't look at the poster because it would have ruined everything for you, and yeah. you're glad you didn't watch the trailer. Like yes. I am so surprised that was hidden until like I was like, oh shit, Simon Pegg. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, why, I was why really we... upset that they didn't make Oz big and have him DJ at that. That that actually looked exactly how I envisioned it too. The that looked sphere. like it, but the the premise of what it was, it was like, oh, we're just gonna meet at this nightclub. In the book, it's Space Og's club. birthday party. Yeah. And it's a special invite only. Either way, watch the movie, read the book, or read the book and watch the movie. Um, it's great if you if you've gotten this far. I'm assuming you have. <laughs> if you've only experienced one and not the other. Do both, because they're both good. Uh, they both stand their own. Jared didn't like the movie that much, but... Um, it's because I... Re- the lesson here, kids, is don't read. The reading yeah. is stupid. Watch movies and television. Uh, <laughs> just here. This this is where your this is where your head should be. In, this, in the matzo. In the matzo. Do you know what might be cooler than the movie, and maybe they'll do it, but they probably won't? Ready Player they- Two? Okay, so in the book, when you put on the <laughs> Oasis goggles, the first thing you see is Ready Player One. That... Sorry, I had to get that out. So, <laughs> what I was going to say was if they made it a game, like a video game that you can play through the book. Difficult. That Another licensing nightmare. Movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah I that mean, would be so fun. It's so much harder to make a video game than it is to make a movie. And then you can put a whole uh, tre- treadmill scene. <laughs> Well, do you, you know, you know what this run. must have been you like have for run. the, you know what this must have been like for the legal team for Warner Brothers Probably is all of the Sixers in IOI like at the table. No, no, it's uh, this game, and uh, we have to like all they're arguing <laughs> like in the movie. That's what the legal team must have looked like during the planning and writing. Of Many this film. lawyers <laughs> lost their lives. In <laughs> fact, to, to make this, this movie, yes, Grand Moff Tar- uh, uh, Mon Mothma. If uh, anybody with any sort of influence over this watches this. Please put a featurette on the Blu-ray disc about the licensing because that would be fascinating. I think <laughs> so amazing. Did you? I, I know I mentioned it really quick, and I just think it's super interesting. Um, the when I mentioned like the Roger Rabbit parallel before. Did you know when they did that movie, there were specifics? So like, if Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse were on the screen at the same time together, Mickey Mouse, if Mickey Mouse spoke first, Bugs Bunny had to be on the screen last. Like that's how they made all of those things work oh and so it was an equal share for everything so crazy i guess and, I, it makes sense because you don't want they feel like their characters in a certain place and they don't want any character to be diminished it was i there, there's very cool trivia on who framed roger rabbit like and, a lot of it and now i feel I, like i mean we say that it was probably a nightmare but i'm sure it was actually much easier now that we live in this like cross universe you know thing but i guess well that's still all their own properties right like, Warner Brothers. Well, they use mostly theirs. Well, they, everybody, the Shining so. is Fox. No, no, it? they they had to, like there were a couple X wings in there. I was told. Oh, I see. I didn't even see them. Like I think oh, there was in a, the battle. There's an X wing and a Tie Fighter. Yeah. Like it's, he's like they secured limited rights to things. This is a movie I'm gonna probably have to go see again in IMAX. Even though we went to a great screen to see it, and and I'm definitely gonna buy this on Blu-ray and sort of just watch it and freeze frame it because it's a fun sort of. Uh, the whole it's, it's movie's a fun, yeah. Easter egg. It's Be- a fun Easter egg sort of hunt. Yeah. Speaking of crossover and not related to anything, can Hugh Jackman, can you please be 
in Avengers. Thank <laughs> Maybe you. he will be. <laughs> Maybe you. they've Can been hiding it. Platform to if Jesus. they've been Jesus. hiding that, could you imagine how amazing that would be? Oh my if God. we go see Infinity me, War and Wolverine night. pops out somewhere. I feel, I, you know, oh, can I say something? I'm going to say something. Can, can I say something? something? You know, no, please. Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> I was very, I was very, upset. <laughs> I was very upset in, in uh, Jedi that like I keep waiting for our generations like you know you know I am your father like wh- where is it going to be? They keep saying they should do this. They'll do it. They're going to do one. You know, because it can happen. You can do it. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, it didn't happen in Jedi. I thought maybe it would be like, you know, like, you know. like In the like, last Jedi. Like, like his and her, like, just the, the cartoon, like, you know, it was Obi-Wan's granddaughter, mm-hmm. Rey. And, no, you know, nobody. Oh, that, that was great. And then, <laughs> and then um, I keep hoping that maybe they'll do that with Hugh Jackman. I don't care what you want to rationalize out. Make anything. Make anything you want to say. Even if he comes in for a second and he's Wolverine around, you don't want him to be Wolverine ever because he's getting old, right? So he comes in and then <laughs> he, he changes his reality. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <Huh? laughs> I just... and then... And then... And then... He, you know, it becomes a, the new... The whoever's going to be Wolverine. But he gets to be in it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just like the verb wolverine around. And that's all the time we have. Tony's okay with that. Snick, snick, snick. <laughs> joining me today, or joining us today, was our special guest, the incredible Tony Hansen. Yay! Happy to be here. Late comer. It's not my problem. It's not, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have said that in the other one. We forgot. <laughs> anyway, uh, my, my lovely wife, Anne Marie Castellano. <laughs> my co host, the lovely and ch- charming and talented and sexy, Jared Pressman. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm Richie Castellano. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Um, because we didn't play anything, uh, and because there was no rush in this freaking movie, <laughs> we're going to play some Rush now. Uh, yeah. This is from my Wednesday night streams. Uh, if you want to check that out, please make sure you are on my uh, Facebook or you follow me on Twitter, at Rich underscore Castellano. And I do these Wednesday night shows. They're interactive. I take requests from the audience. We, uh, we, we hang out. We have a good time. So this is what it looks like, and we're going to close the show with some Rush. <laughs> 